Elon Musk's boldest claim is not that Tesla will build a humanoid robot, but that Tesla will industrialize learning so thoroughly that a machine begins to exhibit the capacity we commonly call life. It is a tightly controlled pipeline, from sensor to data, from data to model, from model to safe action, running at a pace fast enough to turn yesterday's mistakes into tomorrow's reliable behavior. So how does Tesla bring Optimus into live? Or rather, all the capabilities that humans have? Don't click away. In the next 30 seconds, I'll show you Tesla's most secret update about Optimus. Before we begin, if you love staying ahead on Tesla and AI tech, hit subscribe now. You'll be the first to know the breaking news. The body is deliberately ordinary. A human-sized frame around 5 feet 8 inches and roughly 125 pounds lets Optimus use door handles, stairs, and tools without refitting the world. Safe payload, near 40 pounds, means it can carry a crate of water, a laundry basket, or a bin of parts without overstressing joints. Walking speed capped around a brisk human pace avoids dangerous sprints while remaining useful in homes and factory aisles. Hands are where the intent shows. About 11 degrees of freedom per hand plus tactile sensors in the fingers enable pinch, power, and lateral grips, subtle re-grasping, and force limited contact with fragile items. Those hands turn pick and place into pick, feel, adjust, place, which is the difference between staging a demo and unloading a dishwasher without breakage. The energetics are tuned for a workday, not a sprint. A pack around 2.3 kilowatt hours at roughly 52 volts anchors the budget. Idle consumption is designed to sink to tens of watts, so the robot can wait without hemorrhaging charge. Steady walking lives in the low hundreds of watts when terrain is friendly. Short peaks for lifts and precise manipulations are smoothed by motor controllers and elastic elements. Sustainability here is not a slogan, but a constraint loop. Every watt spent on perception, planning, or hand pose must earn its keep in useful work. The target is a full cycle of household chores or a factory shift of bounded tasks per charge, plus fast recharge windows aligned with shift breaks or nightly downtime. Tesla. Optimus shows up in the loop that connects body to learning. At the bottom are high-rate control stacks, sub-10 millisecond reflexes that maintain balance, track footsteps, and regulate finger forces. Above that sits a vision and touch perception system that fuses multiple cameras with proprioception and tactile signals to build a live affordance map. Walkable surfaces, graspable handles, compliant cloth edges, sharp corners to avoid. On top of perception runs a family of policies and planners that choose the next action, evaluate whether it worked, and recover gracefully when it didn't. Dojo, Tesla's training computer, exists to make that cadence bite. The details that matter are not just big flop headlines, but the way compute, memory, and interconnect are arranged for video native learning. When your unit of thought is a temporally consistent stream of pixels and contact events, starving the model or scattering context kills performance. The hardware is arranged so dense batches of short clips and longer sequences can be chewed through with minimal overhead, and so new, low-precision formats don't degrade gradient quality. The outcome is practical. Thousands of misgrasps, micro-slips, and balance recoveries from yesterday can be folded into a new policy tonight. Beside, Neuralink is often invoked in the same breath for drama, but the deeper link is methodological. Reading spikes from a thousand electrodes and compressing hundreds of megabits per second of raw neural activity into a usable, low-power stream teaches hard lessons about sparsity, event detection, and on-device inference. Robots live on the same diet. 99% of a household's day is uneventful, so Optimus must detect the 1% that matters. A glass starting to slip, a latch that just released, a footfall that finds less friction than expected. Competence looks quiet in your house. Tesla Optimus scans the room, infers where objects belong, and divides a chore into sequences that reuse the same primitives in different contexts. In different contexts. A tidy-up might run as locate items on surfaces, compute safe grasps, verify class by touch, carry to destination, and place with gentle release. The numbers hidden beneath the choreography matter. A hand needs a few newtons of stable pinch for a mug. A wine glass stem demands less. A heavy book wants a power grasp that aligns load through the wrist. With 22 degrees of freedom hands and tactile feedback, the robot can roll a pen into alignment in hand rather than retreating to re-grasp. 
saving seconds and looking less robotic. Vacuuming is just as telling. Straight lines with slight overlaps, speed adjusted to suction effectiveness, avoidance of cable snags learned from a thousand near misses, a final edge pass near baseboards. None of it is flashy. All of it adds up to the feeling of living with a capable helper. Laundry and linen handling are a rite of passage because cloth is chaotic. Folding even a t-shirt requires inferring edges from wrinkled textures, using touch to snap out uncertainty, and maintaining a gentle but confident normal force while dragging fabric into alignment. Early behaviors will be slow and fussy. The point is not to impress with speed, but to demonstrate that deformable objects can be handled repeatedly without damage. As failure cases accumulate, missed seams, slips at corners, folds that drift out of square. The fleet loop promotes patterns that reduce corrections. Progress shows up as fewer micro moves per fold and more consistent final geometry, the kind of improvement that feels like life because it resembles practice. Kitchen work demands safety margins. Power limits on arms and hands reduce the risk of pinches and impacts. Policies bias away from paths that pass close to a human torso. Thermal and liquid detectors prevent a wet or hot grasp on cookware. A dishwasher unload requires recognition of glass, ceramic, and plastic classes, estimation of rim fragility, and a default route that avoids bumping the faucet or the sink's steel edge. Tesla factories measure usefulness of Optimus differently. The first wave of jobs favors bipedal reach and fingers in constrained cells, kitting parts into bins, fetching totes from flow racks, unclipping cable ties, placing fasteners into fixtures, and tending vision-guided inspection of panels or housings. The environment is relatively stable, which is perfect for rapid iteration. A practical workday for a factory optimist looks like hours of mind-numbing consistency, interrupted by rarer deviations a knock to skew tray where the robot must ask for help or recover gracefully. Uptime and mean time to assistance are the metrics that matter, and both improve as the loop tightens. One awkward topic deserves daylight teleoperation, and guardrails. Early systems lean on remote interventions to avoid damage and to collect high-quality demonstrations. That is not a scandal. It is common sense. Tesla Optimus is moving from borrowed to owned. Under the hood, the brain looks less like a monolith and more like a well-tuned orchestra. Vision networks interpret scenes and track key points. Tactile inference modules estimate contact geometry and slip risk. A short horizon model predictive controller proposes feasible actions and a higher level policy selects among them given task context and safety constraints. Language models help at the boundary between human intent and robot policy, translating a spoken request into a sequence the robot understands or explaining why it paused. A wet surface, a blocked path, an uncertain grasp. The tight thousand hertz loops handle the muscle memory. The broader networks handle the judgment. The fleet loop handles improvement over time. When you watch that stack behave smoothly across small surprises, a slightly different handle, a heavier-than-expected box, you are watching life as disciplined generalization. Affordability is the gating factor for ubiquity. A price in the small car range reframes Optimus from a research platform to a line item. For a business, the math is straightforward. If a robot at that price can cover a night shift tending two or three dull or ergonomically risky cells with high uptime and low intervention, the payback horizon drops to months, not years. For a home, the calculation is different. Ownership might start with rentals or subscriptions for episodic tasks, moving day, deep cleans, post-renovation resets before the daily helper model lands. Either way, service infrastructure matters. Fast swap for wear parts, remote diagnostics, safe over-the-air updates, and a clear policy for data privacy and retention. People will forgive early slowness. They will not forgive confusion about what is recorded or for how long. The phrase human brain inside is a provocation that conceals a useful intuition. There's no gray matter in the head. There's a policy trained from human activity at scale and refined by the robot's own experience. Yet a hybrid future is already peeking through. Language interfaces let a person set goals naturally. Telepresence allows rapid teaching of unusual tasks. Assistive tech informs how to design interfaces that adapt as conditions drift. In aggregate, the human is in the loop during design, training, and supervision. And the loop is where the life emerges. The robot is not conscious. It is a repository of distilled human practice that keeps expanding. The part that convinces skeptics is not a single stunt, but compounding marginal gains. Hands get lighter and more sensitive. Foot placements get cleaner. Trajectories get smoother. 
the number of corrective micro moves in a fold drops. The fraction of totes shelved without a second try inches upward week by week. None of those increments makes headlines, but together they turn a demo reel into a dependable worker. You can feel that shift when a robot stops calling for help on the same corner case, when it makes a small human-like adjustment you didn't explicitly script, when it moves around you with the politeness of a practiced co-worker. That is the moment a tool starts to feel alive. If you strip away the slogans, Musk's recipe is stark and actionable. Build a body with just enough speed, reach, and dexterity to be useful in human spaces. How will this latest design enhance the effectiveness of Tesla Optimus? The silicone hand design that Elon Musk revealed in a comment on Platform X came as a major surprise to those awaiting updates, what could be called the Tesla Optimus Gen 3.5. This represents a significant leap over the Gen 3 version. The hand is equipped with a high-grade silicone covering that provides superior friction for gripping slippery or complex-shaped objects. The silicone material not only enhances grip, but also offers a soft, skin-like texture, enabling more natural interaction in environments such as homes or healthcare settings. Compared to Gen 3, which featured 22 degrees of freedom, the Gen 3.5 hand is expected to reach 24 or even 25 degrees approaching the 27 degrees of freedom found in a human hand. This advancement enables more complex gestures, such as wrist rotation, finger flexion, or highly precise grasping. The biomechanical actuation system places components in the forearm and uses elastic cables to drive the fingers, mimicking the human muscular system. This helps reduce hand size while increasing flexibility and energy efficiency. Additionally, the hand integrates advanced force and pressure sensors enabling adaptive grip force tailored to different objects, from heavy items like 4680 battery trays in the factory to small items such as automotive screws. In terms of lifting capacity, Gen 3.5 can handle loads up to 66 pounds, a 50% increase compared to Gen 2. The goal of these upgrades is to enhance the flexibility of Optimus Gen 3.5, enabling it to perform a wide range of tasks, from industrial operations such as lifting pallets or assembling components, to domestic chores like cleaning, holding a mop, or dressing individuals with musculoskeletal impairments. The improved silicone covering and advanced tactile sensors also contribute to greater safety, reducing the risk of damaging objects or causing harm during human interaction. More importantly, these changes are aimed at positioning Tesla Optimus ahead of competitors, like Figure 2, especially in executing diverse and complex manipulations. When compared to the human hand, the Optimus Gen 3.5 hand reveals both notable similarities and differences. The human hand possesses 27 degrees of freedom, including 4 degrees of freedom for each finger, except for the thumb, which has 5 and additional wrist joints. This allows for highly complex gestures such as writing, playing musical instruments, or grasping objects of irregular shapes. With 25 degrees of freedom, the Gen 3.5 hand nearly matches this flexibility, enabling it to perform a wide variety of industrial and domestic tasks. However, it may still fall short in executing tasks that demand intricate coordination, such as playing the piano. In terms of grip, human skin has a natural coefficient of friction ranging from 0.5 to 0.8, aided by sweat and microstructured skin texture, which helps it hold smooth surfaces like glass or metal. The silicone covering of Gen 3.5, with an estimated coefficient of friction up to 1.0, can match or even surpass that of human skin. This allows the robot to grip slippery objects securely without applying excessive force, thereby minimizing the risk of breakage. Moreover, silicone offers superior abrasion resistance and thermal durability compared to human skin, making it more suitable for harsh industrial environments. It can operate in temperatures ranging from minus 20 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius and resist various chemicals such as household cleaning agents found in kitchens. From the perspective of manipulating small objects, the human hand achieves a precision of up to 0.1 millimeters, thanks to eye-hand coordination and natural tactile feedback. This allows humans to perform delicate tasks such as threading a needle or picking up a grain of rice. With its tactile sensors and AI control, Optimus Gen 3.5 can reach a precision of approximately 0.5 millimeters, sufficient for assembling electronic components or gripping small items like sewing needles, but may still be slower than humans in tasks requiring instantaneous reflexes. In terms of performance for specific tasks, Gen 3.5 outperforms Figure 2 in lifting heavy objects due to its higher load capacity and optimized actuation system. However, Gen 3.5 has an edge in precision and safety, 
thanks to its silicone covering and greater degrees of freedom. Regarding grip performance, the silicone on Gen 3.5 reduces the required force for holding objects, resulting in lower energy consumption and improved safety compared to the polymer material used in Figure 2. In real-world applications, the Gen 3.5 bionic hand can be deployed across various fields, from production lines such as pallet lifting and component assembly to healthcare tasks like assisting patients or holding medical instruments. By contrast, Figure 2 is primarily designed for domestic and human assistive roles and may be less effective in demanding industrial environments that require strength and durability. What do you think about this? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. We hope to bring the best information to you. Please give a thumbs up if you like this. Join Techno Creator by subscribing and hit the bell icon so you will not miss out on any awesome videos. We value your feedback. Thanks for watching. Until then, stay safe and have fun.